It was frankly hard to believe. We were really amazed at the extent to which the single injection of a base editor extended the lifespan of these progeria mice. Since the structure of DNA was discovered in 1953, we've learned more and more about the code of life and what makes us all unique. But with three billion components, mutations can occur, disrupting how cells function. The entire sequence of the human genome has now been mapped, allowing scientists to investigate genetic disorders and what causes them, opening the door to possible gene editing therapies. Progeria is a rare genetic condition that results in a child's body aging rapidly. Dr. Leslie Gordon has dedicated her life to finding a cure for very personal reasons. Our son, Sam, was born in 1996. Um, and in 1998, at the age of two, after lots and lots of medical tests, we received the diagnosis of progeria for Sam. Children with progeria are born looking pretty normal, but within the first year, they start to fail to thrive, which means they don't grow well, they fall off the growth curve. And they're very, very thin because they don't have a lot of body fat. They lose all their hair, their joints are a bit contracted, they have some bone problems. The most important thing about progeria to understand is these children suffer from a accelerated, premature cardiovascular disease, heart disease. And this is why they pass away at an average age of 14 and a half years from the heart disease. Those children with progeria are, I would say, brilliant uh, and uh, fabulous, but their brains aren't affected. In other words, they can go to school with their peers, even though they're smaller, it doesn't matter and they have the same hopes and dreams and really capabilities of being highly accomplished. So even though there are many obstacles in my life, with a lot of them being created by progeria, I don't want people to feel bad for me. I don't think about these obstacles all the time, and I'm able to overcome most of them anyway. When Sam was diagnosed in 1999, Dr. Gordon realised that there was very little information available or research being carried out on progeria. We didn't really even know if this was a genetic disease caused by a genetic mutation. We suspected it might be. There was just nothing there and we needed to jumpstart the field. With her husband, Dr. Scott Burns, she founded the Progeria Research Foundation, starting with a database of children with the disease. Over the next 20 years, they raised money to fund basic science grants, started a medical research committee, and held international meetings. What do we see from that? A couple of great things. Today, there are well over 100 incredibly intelligent scientific publications on progeria every year. And also we were able to discover the gene mutation that caused progeria and go from there towards research that launched our first clinical trial, the first ever in the world for progeria and ended up giving us our first approved treatment for children with progeria. Deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA is found in all organisms. It's made up of four chemical bases known as nucleotides. They're adenine A, guanine G, cytosine C, and thymine T. DNA bases pair up with each other. A goes with T and C goes with G, forming what are known as base pairs. There are three billion base pairs arranged along two spiraling strands known as a double helix. Sequences from a few hundred to two million base pairs form our genes. Each of us has around 20 to 25,000 genes, which encode all of the proteins that create the characteristics that make us who we are. When a single letter mutation occurs, then the instructions that create proteins are not correct and can cause genetic disorders. With progeria, a thymine base replaces a cytosine base in the gene LMNA. This small mutation causes a protein called lamin A to turn into an abnormal protein called progerin. This protein is in all of us and is produced at higher rates as we age. 
However, in children with progeria, it's a hundred times higher than normal, leading to rapid aging symptoms. Once we understood that the mutation for progeria is in a gene called lamin A, we were able to really find the cause at both the genetic level, the protein level, the biologic level, and do a lot of great things. The discovery also opened the door to possible gene editing therapies. It's the frontier of medicine to go into an animal or a human patient for that matter, to find the base pair that is causing a grievous genetic disease such as progeria and correct it back to the normal DNA sequence. Our research integrates chemistry and evolution to uh, understand biology and to develop new kinds of therapeutics. And over the past 10 years or so, we have focused much of our research on the development and the application of new gene editing technologies. Professor Liu and his team of researchers at the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard are developing new ways of editing our genes, building upon the genetic editing technique known as CRISPR-Cas9 that can be used to change the DNA of animals, plants and microorganisms with extremely high precision. About three billion years ago, bacteria evolved a defense mechanism to fight infection by viruses. When they survive a viral attack, they store a part of the virus's DNA in their own genetic code in a DNA archive known as clustered, regularly, interspersed, short, palindromic repeats, commonly known as CRISPR. When the virus encounters the bacterium again, it quickly makes an RNA copy from its CRISPR archive and passes it to a protein called Cas9. Cas9 scans all genetic material from an attacking virus until it finds a 100% match and binds to that DNA sequence. The protein then acts like a pair of molecular scissors which cut the viral DNA or RNA. This disrupts the function of that gene and therefore the virus's life cycle. The gene editing revolution began when researchers discovered that CRISPR-Cas9 could be programmed in the lab to cut DNA sequences of their choosing, including sequences in the human genome. CRISPR-Cas9 and related DNA cutting proteins can be useful if your goal is to disrupt a gene. But for most genetic diseases, in order to benefit patients, you really need to fix the mutations that cause the disease rather than simply disrupt further the already mutated gene. And so to address that problem, we developed two forms of precise gene editing that doesn't simply mess up genes by cutting them, but rather directly fixes individual DNA base pair uh, mistakes in genes. And those two forms of gene editing are called base editing and prime editing. Of these two new forms of gene editing, the base editing technique was first developed in 2016 and has so far shown a lot of potential. If we think of CRISPR-Cas9 as molecular scissors, base editors are more like erasers and pencils capable of directly changing one DNA letter into another. Base editing disables the CRISPR-Cas9 scissors but keeps its guide RNA, allowing it to focus in on just one DNA sequence of interest among the billions of others and directly change one base to another. The base editor is also programmed to make a nick to the unedited strand. This clever trick forces the cell to correct the disagreement by replacing the letter on the opposite base. Dr. Alexis Comor was the researcher who came up with this incredible genetic trick. So I'm here today to share with you my philosophy for a happy life. So many years ago, I saw a TV interview of Sam Burns, who unfortunately has passed away. And that simply planted the seed of awareness that progeria is this terrible uh, genetic disease and the children with progeria are these amazing thoughtful, articulate, wonderful people who are all aware that they are going to pass away much earlier than their peers. So uh, Luke Koblen, a graduate student in my lab who led this project, first had the idea that perhaps our new adenine base editor, which at the time we hadn't even reported yet, might be well suited to correct a mutation that causes progeria. 
Dr. Liu, David came to the scientific workshop in 2018 and had already done some really beautiful work showing that in cells of children with progeria, he could correct the mutation. And this was really exciting. And we talked about how to launch forward in a bigger way that could really ask, you know, might this be possible? The base editor can directly reverse the root cause of the disease by changing the T that causes progeria back into a C and making the corresponding change on the complementary DNA strand. So fixing both strands of the DNA double helix. And as we looked at the site, we realized that we needed to integrate some improvements, some from our lab, some from other labs, including Keith Chun's lab, in order to generate this tailor-made base editor that is just right to engage the proper site in DNA and change that one base pair that causes so many problems in these children back to the normal DNA sequence. You've just released the initial results of your study. What did you find out? What we showed in the study is that we could make this change in human patient cells and rescue many of the molecular features of the disease. That is, we could fix the problem at the DNA, RNA, and protein level. The base editing molecular machine is packaged into a virus and injected into mice at an early age. When we packaged our base editors into viruses and then injected the viruses a single time into mice with the human progeria gene, the viruses delivered the base editor into a wide variety of tissues in those mice, fixed the mutation back to the normal DNA sequence, and ultimately the mice were much better off than the control mice that were just injected with saline instead of the base editor. So those mice showed a dramatic rescue of their cardiovascular pathology, as well as uh, uh, lived much longer. They lived almost two and a half times as long in terms of their median lifespan. A 7.5 month old homozygous animal, they should be in very deteriorated health, but they are not, which is a fantastic thing. The base editing extended the lives of these mice by two and a half fold, in other words, over 250%. And that is just, I've never seen anything like that before. These are the two week longevity injected AAV9 females who are also 10 months and 24 days old, 329 days total. And as you can see, they're extremely active. It was frankly hard to believe. We were really amazed at the extent to which the single injection of a base editor extended the lifespan of these progeria mice. I mean, I realize a mouse is not a child and transferring something from mice in children, it, there's, it's a big leap. But from what we see, incredible potential. And as we know, a single day in our children's lives is in, absolutely invaluable. And I truly hope that as we look at this base editing potential treatment, that we can move towards bringing it into the clinic, into trials for the children. The Progeria study was a collaboration, not just between Professor Liu and Dr. Gordon, but involving multiple institutions and investigators. The National Institute of Health was a major contributor, as were Francis Collins, Mike Erdos, and Jonathan Brown. It's incredible what you've achieved. What's next for you? There's quite a bit of work that's needed before we can be prepared to treat a human progeria patient. So we are trying to both advance our current base editor as well as develop and apply improved ones. And of course, we are also working on a number of other genetic diseases. Being at the frontier of medicine means there are a lot of unknowns and no new medicines are without risks, but you know, medicine is all about balancing risk and benefits to offer a better situation for patients and their families. So much science in that story. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications.